Well, a warm good morning to you. <laughs> Welcome to my craft room at 12.34 in the morning. I did say in some comments I was going to come and work on this so I could have it up for you as soon as possible. So here we go. We are going to do the other side to our um, seagull. And uh, I'm just really excited that uh, Seaside I just had to grab the book. Seaside is going to have some friends go along with them in this one. And thank you for your lovely comments. I was thinking of you, Allie and Gail and Joyce and all my friends, Charlene and Debbie and everybody that seems to hop on right away. They get to my video and leave me a comment. And so I do think of you and I do appreciate it. And Donna, Donna, we have two Donnas. I think of you as well. Now I'm talking, talking, excuse me, excuse me, oh, right on the ink. And this is detailed black ink. Oh yes, because I was going to try the gray up there, as you can see, the LDRS Creative, but it wasn't dark enough and I didn't have enough ink in the large black. So I do have to place an order and get some black ink because I love pigment ink. And you can see here that uh, you're going to have to press a little harder. I'm pointing to the little points on the end of our, uh, I'll call it a steering wheel for the boat. I'm not, I'm not really up on boat lingo, but this is beautiful. How's that? I love the sayings that go around them too. They're really, this set is unbelievable. And you know, we do find it hard sometimes, at least I do, to make a male card, a masculine card. So this is right up in, you know, if you love to fish or hunt or be on the water, uh, whatever, this makes for a good masculine card. Well, let me change that. An exceptionally great masculine card. So here we go. Remember I said that if you do a lighter ink and you're not happy with it, it's not a dark enough navy, grab a dark gray and go over top of it and then go over the original blue, put some clear embossing powder on it and you're going to be a happy seaman. Yeah, a seaman is that what they call them. And look at this. Woo! Yes, I love to visit. It's kind of like a crazy little bird. I like them. It's a good thing the dog isn't around. Or is it the cats that don't like the birds? I'm all confused. Uh, Anyway, I'm tired, <laughs> so it's going to be a great video. You always know it's a great video when I'm tired and my brain's not functioning. Now, what I'm using here is the Float Your Boat set. Isn't that cute? It's the, it has, can you believe this? It has 18 stamps in this stamp set. And please go over to my blog because I have left direct links for you to each separate product and more. I think you'll really like it. All you have to do is press the blog, you know, um, stampinribbons.blogspot.com in the description box in the front where my video is. It'll take you right there to my blog and you will have all these links. To all of those, there's sales on bundles of inks. So I got out my minis. I got these minis when I first began 15 or 16 months ago designing for LDRS Creative and I still have them and they're still juicy. Only the black I've used up because let's face it, we do stamp with a lot of black and gray. Now I need to get some little fishes on here, some little fish. That's why I put that aquarium in the front because we are working with fish and we're working with clear embossing powder. So here we go. Let's see what we're going to do. And isn't it nice with the Tim Holtz um, positioning tool that it doesn't have any sides like edges on it. So it goes right off of the positioner. You don't have to worry about the size of your paper on the right and on the bottom. It's just flat. So that is really going to help when you have large amounts of stamps on the paper. It does help. I mean, you only have that amount of space, but your page can go off and then you can move it over, move it up, and it's peachy keen. Now, I wanted you to take a good look at this stencil. Isn't it amazing? You have the rough waters, it looks real when you start stenciling, of the ocean or lake. 
it's beautiful on the top. And then underneath, it has the bubbles, it has the growing fungus, it has the leaves, you know, all of that uh, leaves that kind of hide the fish under there. You can tell I don't know anything about the bottom of the ocean other than whales and sharks. But um, as far as what grows under there, I don't know. It just looks really nice here in this stencil. And notice it doesn't have a bottom. The bottom is cut and it's free. That way you can take your stencil and keep moving it down or move it. It would be moving it up. So put it at the bottom of your page and keep moving it up and everything on there will be longer, you know? Or you can move it side to side because it's not cut out in two straight lines. It's freed up on the bottom, kind of in a wave, as you can see. And so I took advantage of that, and you're going to see that in just coming up here. Now, if you want to, I, I slowed this down at just the way, you know, a nice slow working atmosphere here. Now, I made this little binder. I got it at Tuesday morning, and I thought it was so cute because it had these uh, wonderful pages with two by two paper in them, perfect for getting the uh, stamping out the colors of the LDRS um, hybrid inks. And I did it with one of their uh, stamps that was lips. <laughs> then I did my brush lettering, of course, just to get practice. Wherever I can get practice with my brush lettering, I put it in. So now I'm going to pick out the colors that I want to use in the grass and all of the growth down at the bottom of the ocean. So I, it serves such a great purpose because you get to see which green uh, tones go together and, you know, other colors. And then you can fold it up. There it is right there. I picked these two out. I'll set them aside. And then I'll go over and see. And I still have a lot of room for other uh, inks that I order because so many more come out. Angie has more inks coming out in the large and the small ink pads. So always watch for that. This is, uh, I this these are all that I got in the first order, which I was super blessed to get that many. And I made this fun little album. I got the album at Tuesday morning and it had two by two cards with the folders in it to slide them down. And it's colorful and it's cheerful and I really, really like it. So now let's get out my dollar store where nothing's a dollar uh, fancy brushes. And uh, we're going to start creating. Now, believe it or not, you can create with a stencil. You can create much more than what you see right here. And is this ever an ingenious idea to leave the bottom open on the stencil? The, the, the top portion is open so that you can get more water. You can just move it down, move it down. And the same on the bottom, you can move it up or down. But, you know, if you started this at the bottom and then started moving it up, works, I guess it works well both ways because I'm going to be doing it from the top and moving it down. You'll see that. And you know the size you're going to have. And then I'm getting my inspiration from the back page of the stencil, which is absolutely unique. You don't have to run and go on the computer. It is right there for you. You just turn it over and I'll tell you what's right there for you, the prices. They're amazing. They're just amazing. I tell you that all the time. For top quality stamps, dyes, and all the rest of it, uh, inks and hybrid inks, you know, you're going, Angie is not trying to put her prices super high so we can't attain it and get and be able to buy them. It's very important to her. If you listen to her videos, it is very important to her to keep everything affordable and yet high quality. So when you join her Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 Eastern Standard Time, she talks about things like that. I think you'll really enjoy it. And you can tell I'm talking super fast because this tutorial is only 48 minutes. <laughs> that's that's a, not bad for me. And uh, But I have so many uh, projects to go. So, you know, when you have to edit down, you know, 20 hours, 40 hours worth of work, down into something in the hour range, it takes some thinking. It really does. And here I have one of those, um, I 
Let me grab one here. Uh, it's uh, Clarity Stamp Brushes. I like those two. I bought those some time ago when they first came out. Now, this is what I'm showing you, how you can move these around. You can make them longer. You can add to them. You can crisscross the foliage here. Um, you know, make some to the right, some to the left. You actually get to design the designed embossing folder. Is that Does that make sense? You really do. And you can put more of this weed going all over. Uh, plant life. That sounds better, doesn't it, than weeds. Plant life. And I put a ton of bubbles on there because I'm going to put glossy accents on it. And then I grabbed for my smaller inks and I'm going to put some goldfish in there. You have to have some goldfish in the ocean. I mean, when you flush them down the toilet, where do you think they go? <laughs> Don't tell my grandchildren that. I only have a few that are young, you know, saying I flush them down the toilet. That would be awful that their nan does that. But then I can show them this and say, see, they're real happy. They're happy. They went to their happy place in the ocean, from the toilet bowl to the ocean. I should make a little song up like that. But anyway, yes. So now I'm going to go ink to paper to make them nice and dark because there's tons of hybrid ink in these little babies. And in the big babies, let me tell you, it seems like you're never going to run out. And there's that deep navy uh, that I talked about. And if you lay up, like you don't put a lot of force on these brushes. And let me tell you, these are from our Dollar Tree where nothing's a dollar. I probably paid a dollar twenty-five, a dollar fifty for this, but look how big it is, and look at all of them in my bowl. Every time I go to the dollar store where nothing's a dollar, I pick a few of these up and add it to my collection, and they're beautiful. And all you have to do is wipe them down on a cloth, and not on anything wet, just on a nice cloth. And here I want sun rays, of course, coming through the ocean waves. I want the sun rays, so just take a piece of paper and go over it in, um, you know, bend the paper and make some bends in it as you are lightly coming off the paper onto the page. And we are gonna color it in, so it's not gonna be this dark. Then you have to clean up. I like to clean up in between um, everything so that I, and, and have some <laughs> Lay's pickle chips, of course. When do I find time to craft, you're asking me. The woman's continually eating. Yeah, it's chip bits I'm taking off here. <laughs> Not clear embossing powder, right? Yeah, yeah uh, you can't hear me because I'm doing an edit. That's what's nice about it, right? I could be like chomping my chips or just, you know, however you chew. I, I chew with my mouth closed. I have to teach my grandchildren to do that, so I do it. But, uh, you know, I could be doing it anyway, and you wouldn't hear it because I block all of that off. There we go. Whenever you see me throw something onto the island, I just went and got it out of my stash. I totally wrecked this cover for sure because I was anxious to get it on there. And it's similar to the pink one that we use, this teal one. It, it just went with the... Uh, now watch this. Watch this beautiful Extreme Cleaner clean this stencil. It is gorgeous, gorgeous cleaner. Is there such a thing? I mean, look, it's all coming off. Took a baby wipe, extreme LDRS creative cleaner, and you have a brand new stencil, my friends. And then I went, put it away, because I like to put everything clean and put it away and into my folder. And that's, you know, a clear mind works better. A cluttered mind uh, does mix media. <laughs> You can write that one down on the bathroom wall. That's what I was thinking. And here's the one I used before. So I'm trying to make up my mind to use this one and follow suit with doing all of them the same. Remember I did the first page with that. And then, um, I don't even know if it was, yes it was that one sitting right out here. I still haven't, I haven't put that one away because I was thinking I was going to use it again. But uh, I have to make up my mind. If I use the outside one, I get more space, I get more items in it, you know, more bang for my buck. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to put this out. I have to situate it so you can see everything. 
you know, you're not always, your dies aren't going to be super big that you can see the whole image, but you do want to work with uh, as much as you can get, and it's LDRS Creative. Like I said, the dies are Teflon coated, and they are priced super, super well for us crafters. Now, I have my Anna Griffin Empress still not open. I haven't touched it all day. So I grabbed, yeah, I've been doing this, these projects for a couple of weeks, so I didn't have this. I just got the Empress on Monday. So here we go. I want to incorporate the likeness when you turn the page. I don't want it to be too off in color. So I'm trying to figure out here exactly what I do as far as that. And I thought with all of the greenery, I'm going to do a navy blue. And you know I like to die cut and ink uh, quite a bit, so I had them ready. And uh, here's the, I need the two snorkel people. I need the snorkel man and the snorkel girl. The, the boy and the girl snorkeler. That's what I'm going to put in my image. It looks like a, it does look like a fishbowl, doesn't it? And then they're swimming so hard that the water on the top is splish, splash all over the place. No, that's not going to work, Carol. Come on. And I wanted to make it a shaker. This doesn't look too bad, but it takes away from the edges. I, I don't like that idea. So I end up keeping it clean, but that looks good. But I had another page I wanted to do with that, so I, I'm going to use that page, but I'm going to use the outer portion so I can keep the guts. So here we go. Let's take out little girl snorkel and little boy snorkel, and we're going to put them on the page. Isn't it fabulous? All of these, you've got skiers, paddle boat people, little girl in a boat, a little girl with her floaty, then, of course, we have to have some fish. I mean, what is this project without beautiful, tiny bubbles? I called her Tiny Bubbles. Isn't that great? She's so cute. I, I couldn't resist putting it into the edit. So now, here's all the fish. It says Best Fishes on the print. They left it white, so when you stamp it with the hybrid ink, you're going to see that. And it's going to be a shaker, so I need to cut out some acetate. So I will wrap around this, and then I'll get the die and cut it out. And we're going to lift it up too high with the dory strips. So you're going to have enough room to put some beautiful prills. There is the dory strips. They're a quarter inch, and I think you get 33. You couldn't get any bigger than that, right? 33, uh, 33 of the pages in there. Uh, I don't know how many per page, but it's well worth the money. I'll leave the link so you can find this because they're so crazy narrow. And um, if you're going to dice cut something narrow and your image is smaller, this is what you need to have in your stash. Uh, and, you know, I mean, you can use the large roll of scotch tape but you have to cut it even, and it has to go around all these curves. So if you take the bottom and the top portion off of these strips, now um, I've been working with these for a long time, so I'm used to having the top strip on, but it would have worked out better for me if I had have taken it off. And I can tell that I had it on because it's shining. And look, there's my pick. This, I'm going to leave the link to these. They were not expensive at all these five picks to work with you know the one I always laugh and say it looks like a hygiene tray set up or a dental assistant tray set up and uh, I got them because it had the long pick for me to work with when I need to get inside and move things but now whoa I've got the ultimate set so I'm really happy and look how nice it gets to the edge doesn't it and yeah I'm I didn't have my dies right <laughs> when I started this project, so I had to fussy cut again. And you know, I didn't mind fussy cutting with the Tim Holtz small scissors. They seem to help me, my wrists and that. And uh, like I say, you should move your project, your paper, more than you move your wrists. It does, see how I'm moving the paper? It does help. And um, I cut out quite a few. 
and I think I used three because you like to work in odd numbers instead of even numbers. That didn't look too bad, does it? No. And uh, yeah, I, I wait till you see how I did that bottle in the ocean, how I made it look like a glass bottle. You're going to love it. You know why? Not because I did it, because it looks like real glass. It looks like it's vintage that it fell to the bottom of the ocean. And then that letter is coming out of the top with a real cork. Oh, yeah, it's a corker. You're going to love it. And it's the next video, I think. So I want to save that because if you are looking to find something that looks like real glass, gets the shadows like the image it's going to fall on or rest itself on, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. So keep that in mind with your Copics, okay? And uh, you will learn, like I have been learning through practice, how to make something look like the color underneath and give off shadows and still maintain the dignity of glass. So that's really cool, isn't it? So here we go. Prills are small. There's my dental. Look at, I'm moving quite fast here. I wanted to keep this, I tried to keep it at 45 minutes. So uh, you weren't, you know, getting too bored because I just put one up, what was it, an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to try to give you some relief here and then we're going to go on to a page that is going to be lengthy because it is a gorgeous scene. Just a gorgeous scene. I love what my cranium came up with. So um, isn't this, this uh, steering wheel gorgeous? I just, I just love it. I have to grab it and see what it says for you. Here are my shakers. It says, in high or low tide, I'll be with, I'll be at your side. So in high or low tide, I'll be by your side. It rhymes. It's gorgeous. And you've got the boy and the girl snorkeler. And here we go. Yes, fussy cutting, but I did it. I just bit my tongue and started cutting. And yeah, I, well, I didn't bite my tongue off. I almost did because fussy cutting isn't my forte, but I will do it if I have to. When these dyes came in, I did a happy dance. I was so excited to come upstairs. But then I had to find another item to uh, use the dyes on, right? Because I have just been creating up a storm and fussy cutting. That's what you do. You know, I think we're a little spoiled. And I'm using the one that turns, even though I'm going a trillion miles an hour. Um, I'll slow that down just a minute. Now I'm going to show you I wanted to get right close. Now this is 140 pound cardstock. So we're talking thick, thick cardstock here that so you want to, if you have thick cardstock, you want to take your time on this because one quick slice can ruin that project, you know. So I took my time, I worked with the little Fiskar cutters. You don't want to get scissors inside there, even though there's a bit of space. Working with these um, finger Fiskars and the white that you see on here is baby powder. I'm going to get a baby wipe and take all that off. It'll be the most luscious navy you've ever seen after I clean it up. But for now, you've got to look at it like this. And it really is beautiful, you know. In high or low tide, I'll be by your side. That's beautiful. Yes, that would be a nice anniversary card. Um, it would be a nice card if somebody's sick, you know, and you're looking after them. That would be a lovely card, masculine or feminine. It would really serve its purpose. So I thought we'd just stare at it here. <laughs> I'm going to pick all the tiny, I am a fussy, fussy person in some things, you know. And this is one of them. I want it to be nice all the way across. I don't want any jagged edges. And I want all of the white to be as even as I can get it. You're not going to get it real even because, you know, this album is not a precise album. It is a vintage shabby chicish album. So, you know, I'm just making sure there's no pieces parts going to drop off in the process. That's all. And look at the cuts in my mat. But that'll all fuse together. You don't even have to worry about it. It's, it's a cutting mat. So that's what it's made for. Now I'll take my Copic uh, dark gray. And I used to do it with white. But um, 
I changed it up. I don't know what happened there. I'll have to figure it out. Maybe I went to a lighter gray on that. I just, oh, it scares me when I do this. Oh, I can see that some of these uh, handles are, have a little bit more white than others, but I thought leave it alone because you know what? The next thing I'll do is go to cut a little bit of white off and I'll cut one of the handles right off. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that happening just as I'm staring at it. So let's get that glue on there and put it down. You've got the bubbles, you've got the sun rays coming through the ocean. You have your goldfish, your purple fish. Um, you made all of those leaves and fungus stuff that grows in the ocean, the seaweed and the just the beautifulness. I wanted to hide this green. I wanted them to be seen but not seen, you know what I mean? And uh, so I thought that was a really nice spot for him because remember, it's a shaker and I have to put another layer of the jury strip on there to raise it up because it is going to be prills. If you're going to use flat beads, well, you can leave just one layer of sticky back tape. But I needed, and I wanted him to have an eyeball. So I went to my stash and took my eyeballs and took a real tiny one. And that, that's the thing with people that like detail. You like to use, you're always thinking of something to add to, even if it's tiny, you know. Now, I have to talk about these Spectrum Noir pencils I used here for the little boy, little girl snorkeler. I did not enjoy the process of coloring with it. I don't know if it was the 140 pound cardstock I was working on, but every time I went to color it, friends, it chipped. You're going to see it little pieces of color came off. You couldn't press too hard because you're up, you have to see it. it it's just, see, it just keeps chipping off. I had to have a nice blush brush I bought at the dollar store and I think it's a dollar. You can see it happening here. I just could not make it work. It's not like Prismas for sure. I mean, you do get what you pay for. I don't even know what I paid for these. It's one of the first pencils I think I bought maybe. I, I don't even remember. I'll tell you, I don't think I used them because it had that white powder over top of the coloring um, stick, you know, uh, the actual crayon. So I was, see, look at that. I wanted to show you. Not only was I checking for the colors that I wanted to put together in her hair, I wanted you to see how they chip. It was just I've never seen anything like it. So I think I'm going to contact them and see if there's, and it's not watercolor. I tried water on it. I sprayed water. I poured water. I stuck it in water. And um, the only thing I could do more was throw it in the bathtub and let it soak and see if it would just, you know, manipulate over the page. But it didn't. And here I thought, I'm going to add black just with the pencil. I just want a light line. I don't want a deep dark line. So I thought, let's see if these markers work for that. And look at all the chips of color all over her. Even on her skin. I mean, it looks like she got some poison ivy down there. She found some poison ivy leaves because all those dots, when I was coloring, embedded into the paper. And I don't think it's supposed to do that. I heard that Spectrum Noir were good pencils, or I wouldn't have bought them. But I have to tell you, I did not enjoy the process of coloring with them. And that's my opinion. You might love them, but I didn't. And so I'm going to see if there's some, I'll find a video just to see maybe I was doing something wrong or something. Look at that. Look at the dots. All those little chips. And then if you color over them, they embed themselves into the paper. That's not good, is it? So... The little girl, she's swimming closer to the top. The boy's being more adventurous because he's upside down, remember? He's the little guy that's got his legs up in the air. He's the wild one. And so I put him down by the, let's see, right almost underneath the wheel. I've got it right here in front of me. Almost underneath the wheel. And I didn't think it mattered if I showed you the coloring close up because a, I wasn't enjoying the, the crayons, and um, B, 
they just kept chipping off and I wasn't getting the look I wanted to get. And even, I'm picky even in small images. I know what I'm going for and I know how to blend uh, because I've been doing it for a little while. And uh, yeah, so here I'm just getting a bit of glue out of there that I can see that oozed out and I couldn't see it from the other angle. But that's okay, here we go. Now I got out my glitter. This is the Stampin' Up glitter I put in my salt shaker. So only little bits come out. You can see I'm struggling to get some out. But did it make that ocean seem look beautiful? Just take some fine. It has to be fine glitter, not the bulky stuff, not the glitter glass. But this is the Stampin' Up Sparkle Glitter. And I've had it for six years. And you see how you just get a little bit in there and it works its way into little bitty spaces. And I put the glossy accents on those bubbles. Don't they look real? They look like real bubbles. Oh, I loved this. I love this focal point. I love the sun coming through. Um, I love the stamps, the dye, the stencil is the ultimate. I made $5.99 for a stencil. That's amazing. Okay, and I'm not gonna say anymore because you know I go crazy and I work myself up into a frenzy because I get so excited when things are affordable. And now I'm showing you, we're gonna fussy cut that little guy. And you can see how thick that paper is, can't you? Uh, I get this paper at my stationery store. It's special order, they cut it in the size they want. They use it for making business cards, so it has to be really thick. And it's super white. It's all white. Oh, get, oh man. Yes, he was trying my patience right there. Oh, but anyway, so I thought, I've got to sneak him. He seems a little bit adventurous, a little bit mysterious. He kind of wants to show off for his little sister up there. I'm going to say their sister and brother. And they're too young looking to be girlfriend and boyfriend. So they're sister and brother. And their parents are panicking up above, <laughs> wondering where they are. And if it was me, I'd have them in uh, two feet of water, like just two feet, and give them snorkels and uh, say, go ahead, have fun, snorkel, but you can only go six feet that way and four feet that way. <laughs> I'm not too far off when I say that either. Uh, yeah, so they're just having a blast looking at all this ocean scenery. Now I'm having one of these. Now this had nothing to do with nothing. I love these cheese things. You know where you take the plasticky stuff off and you get this yummy, yummy cheese. Of course I'm eating. I'm always eating or drinking Coca-Cola. And I got, it was the last one in the bag. But you know when you buy those, I can't remember the name, I think it starts with a B. When you buy them, they come with, they come in netting. Ding, 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 ding. Netting. Oh yes, that netting is going to go in a project. I'm not going to tell you about it until we get to that project. Now here, I bought these at Tuesday morning and they're rubber bubbles. Yes, I said it right, rubber bubbles. And they're see-through and you can color them, Copic colors underneath the flat part, super duper sticky. You don't have to put glue under this. They're not coming out, they're super sticky. And they come in different sizes and I put the different sizes in these little jars that I bought. And you can cut that stuff. You know, sometimes when they come off the line, they're not perfectly sized around the edges. So just take a nice pair of sharp scissors. It's rubber, so you can cut it off very easily. And then put them on, and you can add glossy accents, or you can leave them dull. Look at that. It's just some bigger bubbles added to the bubbles that are in the stamp set. You've got your goldfish, you have all of that luscious, luscious food for the fish. And see how you see that sneaky little fish on the left coming behind that uh, growth? I shouldn't say growth, that doesn't sound good, does it? It's coming in from that uh, growing plant, the plant life. How is that, the plant life? That fish is just sneaking in. He doesn't know what that girl is. She doesn't look like a fish. She's got arms and legs. Here come my prells. I'm matching all the colors that I uh, put down in here. I want to get them off, though. I never even thought. I forgot about the sticky Doris tape. That's all right. Look at my new pokey tool. Takes it right off. you got two inches of pokey there. It's wonderful. 
So anywho, yes, I love that he's kind of looking behind that leaf. And here's some blue green and uh, matches the top portion. And he's going, mm, that's an odd fish there. Look what's coming out of the gills. And, uh, and there's the colors I used right there. So I'm going to put those away. I love my prills. And uh, I love when I have a chance of using them. Now I'm going to put glue over top of my two layers. I did it two layers high. So I wanted to make sure the acetate stuck on this. I stuck on this, yes. And I sometimes, if I remember, I put baby powder on the acetate on the inside so that the prills move around and they don't get stuck because you're going to have static. So the baby powder will take the static off the inside here and uh, put it on a blush brush just a little bit and go over it. I know I did because I really try to remember that. Then take a baby wipe and press it down. Keep your fingers as much as possible away from it or you're going to be windexing the top of this acetate forever. And then we're going to die cut the top portion in that navy wave. See, I do have to clean it. I'm continually cleaning my fingerprints off of it. So we had the acetate. Yeah, this is a good way. This is a good way of cleaning it. So we had the acetate. What do I do? I put my hand in it again. I don't know. You know? And then see all the colors work together? You can't keep raising it up either. You have to let that art get her, get her goo. Get, 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 get her goo. <laughs> Your children. The giddy giddy goo, the glitter goo, <laughs> the glitter glue dry, and then you're, you know, you're safe. It's going to work out. It's not going to come up, but I'm not giving it that much time. Look at me. Oh, I had, I put, remember I put the glossy accents on her uh, eye, snorkel eye things, and they weren't dry. The glossy accents wasn't dry, so the prills were sticking to it. So I'm going to move it over there to dry. I poked off the pearls off of that. And now I am going to cut this right away because I have the dies out. This is going to be for the outside. You can see I'm using the in and the outer die set so that I get a tiny, tiny edge of stripes. And I want the navy stripes to match that um, steer thing. I should look it up to see what it's called. Okay, I stopped and looked it up. The steering wheel is called the helm. And I do like to learn things, and that is good to know. And it steers the boat. And it says in larger boats, it's to the right or the left. And sometimes you will get it on a ship more centered towards the front. So there you go. I just did a little bit of reading, like, you know, uh, 23 seconds of reading. And now it is 1.30 in the morning, so it has been an hour we've been together, and I'm having fun. And see how I, I'm going to use the guts in another project. I just wanted this tiny little edge that comes off when you put the two gut dies together. So I'm going to just snip it there, make it nice and even on the bottom. And uh, this is meant to be a... Um, globe type thing. That's why it has that thing on the bottom. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's a flip card. That, I don't know where I got a snow globe from. Uh, it's a flip card so that you have an actual design like this that's a card and it's, uh, you know, fused together on the top because the way it's die cut. And I'm going to get myself out of that because I'm trying to show you what I did here. I'm <laughs> getting myself all confused because it's late. So isn't that nice? It isn't too much, although those stripes are quite bold, but not when you put it up against this. It looks good, and it's going to go on the paper that has the boats on it. Uh, I'm sorry, the anchors and the helms. Helms. Um, that word reminds me of something. Uh, helper elms. That, that kind of reminds me of something I watched, Helper Elms. Uh, hey, Bobby, uh, what does that say? It says Helper Elms. No, I think it says Helper Elves. No, Elms. Elves. Does that ring a bell to you? That's all I'm going to say. Uh, anyhow, Hunter and I watched that. It was hysterical. So here we go. I'm cutting the edges off that one portion that I had to cut. 
underneath and making it all look nice but we are going to put that twine that braided rib rope around here so the braided rope is let's see it's thick it's one two three layers thick and then we're going to tie it on to the bottom I needed to have that same rope as on the front of the page that we had going across the seagull right we had all of that beautiful rope so um, I had to incorporate that into the shaker isn't it gorgeous I love it I'm telling you I love the sun rays coming down on there sky's the limit when you decorate and I love using the outside of a die like the two layers to get an edging and then you can use the inside guts on another project I can't stop staring at it I think this is a gorgeous set the float your boat 11 coordinating dies 18 stamps and then you get the beautiful stencil to go with it which is called under the sea all the links direct links will be left on my blog I'm going to make it I try to make it all the time easy for you to just press the button they'll be in capital letters and it'll take you right over to the product you just have to say buy it and it's going to be delivered to you so there's a close-up of the prills aren't they beautiful went out in my laneway and got myself some uh, rocks cleaned them up and now I wanted them to be all I, I laughed at that before I'm using leftover e6000 glue that I have in this little tube. I like to use every little portion of it. I have the E6000 spray, which is great. Even if you want to use it, you have large uh, papers you want to glue, just put it in a box and spray it with the E6000, and that is never going to come off your project. But here, I needed to use it because it holds metals and rocks and all kinds of stuff, this E6000. So I did that uh, triple knot and cut off the two sides. I put some big rocks, little rocks all on the bottom. Then we have the shaker little prills down there. Aren't they gorgeous? I tell you, I just love it. And you have the same idea coming through with the cover. It kind of meets itself in the middle, so to speak. When you turn the page, it's not going to be that far off. You have the wood, you have the beautiful rope, you have the helm, you have the uh, lighthouse, you have the seagull, the, the little snorkelers, you have all of the seaweed and the beautiful tide on the top. You can't get any better. I wish I had moved my next project out of the way, the, the uh, glass, the note in the glass bottle. And now we come to the twine. I wanted to see, okay, what am I going to do here? But I wanted to make the, this knot fuller. That's what I did there. And then I want to take three layers and go all the way around it very neatly. I want it to be neat side by side. I didn't want to twist it. I didn't want to turn it like, you know, you could turn it, you know, as you're glue gunning it down. And so it looks like knots just keep turning and turning and turning. But I opted for having it straight, you know, nice and even. And when you look on the side, you don't see any of the double-sided tape. And all you see is the beautiful twine. And I'm showing you those rubber bubbles. And they're called rubber bubbles. They even come in that bottle. Oh, I'm going to go and see if I can find the link for that because you are going to love it. Now, here's the back side, almost identical to the other side. You notice I didn't put any uh, the gold over on my um, the holes that I had made, and my friend Gail, oh, she couldn't wait to tell me <laughs> they're repositional circles. Is that right, Gail? Repositional circles. Oh man, I can't believe I would make a mistake. Just a minute. Thank you, Gail. I went and checked your comments, and it's whole reinforcements, and I'm using my tacky glue. My tacky glue, I forget that I have it because it's behind me in my rasp cart. So I got it out and I love it. I love this uh, tacky glue, our Aileen's tacky glue. So there you have it. Now I'm going to grab some of that uh, uh, bark that the, it had a, a 
an actual limb and they peeled back the bark on it and right there and I peeled it off that that book that I had and I'm going to tie it so that this knot looks like a bow. I'm going to bend it and it really breaks easy. I had to be careful here. But I'm going to bend it so the knot looks like a bow and I'm going to glue it down so that it doesn't. Look at that. And it's so fine and light. It's just, I don't know. And see how the bottom half under the gold looks like the front of the card? I'm leaving that same amount of space. Isn't that looking gorgeous? It's not too much. You can make a card. I do this purposefully, that if I do a project and it is an album, I am thinking of you making a card with it. You don't have to make an album. This could be inspiration for making a card. You could make a five by seven card. This book, when I measure it, and as I'm talking, because now it is 20 to two in the morning, um, this card is, let's see, it is nine inches by six and a half. Nine inches by six and a half. That's what the book is. So I'm getting my glue underneath there. I'm gluing it down so it never moves again. And look at, look at my, um, my set here, my stainless steel uh, hygiene set. I'm, I'm able to use it and get in those little places, you know, that a big pokey tool can't do. It's, it's just too thick or not long enough, you know. And there you have it. It is the back of our um, seaside, our seaside seagull. Yes. And then our goldfish. Oh, yeah. I thought of doing that, but I said no. It needs, it just needs to be left alone. That whole scene is the actual focal point. That's all I needed. And then we're going to move on, my friends, and we're going to do the, uh, sorry, I hit the mic. Uh, we're going to do the back page. So you're gonna have the upper back page and then the back of the page um, for the album. And I think you're going to love it. I'm gonna get that up tomorrow. I'm gonna try to get both of them up for you tomorrow. That way we can move on assembling the album and I can start showing you the cards, envelopes and everything. Now to end this, I got these dollar store where nothing's a dollar pinchy things. I do this so that the glue uh, will dry on here because I do have the rope on there and I did want that little fine pieces going, you know, strip going around it to dry right on there, just in case it got shoved or something. So have, let's get going. Have yourself a blessed week, my friends. Thank you for taking the time to join this new summer release by LDRS Creative. And you did a great job. All of the design team makers did a great job. And we are going to get this book and we're going to get her going. So there you have it. Enjoy the pictures.